Uh, hello there, and welcome to Fridays with Tab and Chance. I am Tabitha Brown, and this is my husband. I'm Chance, what's up? Bring the beat in. Fridays, Fridays, Fridays with Tab and Chance. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Fridays, Fridays, Fridays with Tab and Chance. You got to finish the note. Cut the note short. It's Huh. With Tab and Chance. Then you go into that. I'm a little sleepy today, though, baby. Well, so that's up. why I was kind of like this. I was kind of lean well, back. Wake up, duck. Lean back. Lean back. Lean, lean, lean. I lean, I lean back. Mm. Okay. You had one little video of you singing shy, and now you think you... This is not a solo right here. No, it was more so about the Joe to see. But this is a duo. I mean, you're a duo. You're not going solo. I could have been the fifth member. Welcome to Fries with Tab and Chance. Uh, today. Word for word, I had it down. Would you? I yeah. Killed that, that, I killed that Come and Talk to Me. When did you do Come and Talk to Me? You didn't post that one, did you? Oh, no, I didn't post that one. Because you was a hater. But I ain't posting it. I'm going to post it for you later. Though. I killed that one. Stay focused. So, anywho, can't stop my own the 4th of July. I like the videos. With, but with Shy, I, was, I always played Garfield's role. Th that's what you play? Yeah, that was my note when he come in. That's his name on? Yeah, that's his real name. Shy was Garfield. His name's Garfield. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what, was your, what was his role, though? I mean, you know, the note that he hit, you know, it's the, when you come in on the second part and you come in with that. They seen the video, they know what I'm talking about. See, see y'all got a, his head and got a little big because he on the in, in the internet streets. Man, okay. Me and Lose killed that. Well, Troy's really she 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 really no. Like, she was Troy, doing her Mario dance yeah. and all. <laughs> Troy's got a problem with always want to be Flash. What's wrong with that? Don't nobody want to see you, Otis. That's see, that's you. You think that everybody came to see you. You David Ruffin? David Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> we just went through about 10 different groups. So anyway, today, uh, our, well, I mean, I guess we did a, a video. Right? I'm trying to tap sleep. Wake up now. I, I can't get my words together. Mm -hmm. So we did a post, and we asked y'all to send in your topics or some questions or whatever. So today we said we're going to do a Q&A with y'all. Because we got so many of them, we was like, some of them we've already kind of addressed before, or topics we've already covered. And so we was like, let's go through a couple of them in real time, and let's talk about it, okay? So we're going to start with... Uh, let's start with this one. Somebody asked about... Find What's the, one, the name, though? Find the, I don't know. Find the one with the person with communication. Well, we're going to get to it, babe. Let's just get it out the way. Babe, we're going to okay, get all right, to all right, it. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's start at the top. Buffy Purcell, hey girl. <clears throat> she said that you made her embarrassed to ask this. Because she nasty. Because in the video, Chance said, don't be asking nasty questions. Yeah. She says, how we keep, how do y'all keep it spicy after so many years together? Y'all seem so into each other. Hashtag relationship goals. But how we keep it spicy after so many years? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question because it don't require a whole lot if you have a if you have a real I don't know you got the a real attraction is there, yeah. yeah like I don't know how you when people say keep it spicy mm -hmm. and you got like we're not easily embarrassed because right. we grew up together yeah. right so yeah. we can say almost anything. <laughs> to one another and we know how to say things to one another because we've been together so long. Yeah. So I I imagine when it's something that I desire or something that I want to explore, um, I just tap into who my wife is and what I know about her and, and I say it in a way that I know she needs to that it needs to be said, but how I need to be heard. 
What you trying to say? You get what I mean? Like, so that's how you keep it spicy. You just say, you, you say what you mean and mean what you say and express what you like. Yeah. Express what you need and... What you need? I don't need nothing right now. I need you to stay focused. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Say what you mean now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say, first and foremost, everything that, that Chance just said, we do know each other well, so we can communicate. Uh, but that does not mean there have been times when it was not spicy. Uh. Right? There are peaks and valleys. There are times when it's real spicy. You gotta get the ice. This thing got hot. <laughs> and then there's sometimes where, like, man, you, I man, get back you, up. You might have to get the lotion. <laughs> <laughs> <it's> the <laughs> you so man, this woman right here. <laughs> Jay is man down. JR just fell. JR, we ain't but three minutes head. in. We three but, minutes in. What I'm saying is, this is the truth. But because, like you said, we are so open with each other, yeah. we can be honest. This ain't it right now. This right? ain't it. Um, but we are also best friends. Like, we genuinely like each other. Yeah. You know? So, Which makes it, that's what I mean. It makes yeah. it, it's a good point. There are, you yeah. know, you talking about 20, 25 years. Yeah. No, I don't want to give anybody an impression that, you know, out of all those years, all we doing is jumping on each other and, you know. Right. But the majority of those, I mean, the attraction is there, but it may be an issue of something else that is preventing you from being able to really get to it. Yeah. And I mean, I think that we always can do better with, I guess when you say keeping it spicy, like with like dating and being yeah. romantic and setting the, the, the mood and that type of thing. But when you have been together for a long time, sometimes that laying on the couch together, that little, that little subtle, you know, rub, we just established this the other day. <laughs> What's going on with Jay over there? Why is he crying? <laughs> Go ahead. We just established this like two weeks ago that during the daytime, if I hit chance with like a little, he was like, hey, you, you, you gotta be intentional. What, what is your intention with this little rub back? Cause that means you might want to do something a little later. And I was like, no, that's just me wanting to be like. In my head, that means you want to do something. <laughs> he said, but no, it's a different type of way that you do the rub. I was like, no, well, you hey. can't. That's, that's a seductive like, rub. I, it ain't a, it, that's just me, like, you put lotion that, on the that, day. That's yeah, good. that's seductive, <laughs> right there. That's seductive. But, this is, and this this right here is up for debate. This, this, with the rub she did, do it again. Seductive. You want to do something, right around to something. <laughs> <laughs> this rub right here, hey, babe. That little pat. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, hey, baby. Hope you're having a good day. Now do yours. Wanna do something, right around to something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right there. So All right. the little things. Little things. Right? Sometimes it's just the little things that you know your 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 partner, right? Mm -hmm. I know that he easily influenced. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh but you do those things that you know. And then of course as you know, when you feel like, oh, Try something new. Let's do a little something different. You do that too to spice it up. But some things ain't broke, right? Some things, the spice is just right. You mm -hmm. already got the perfect recipe, right? So uh, make sure you let the spirit guide you on and, your measurements. And before we move on, yeah, don't overthink it. T-shirt, do the job. T-shirt and my face. Oh. Dark meat. B babe, hmm? you said don't be nasty. That ain't. I'm looking out for the fellas. We just trying to make legs it easy. That, that was a, it, this was a woman who asked dark the question, legs right? And just, you can listen. There's a whole lot to be said about the dark meat. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's move on, man. Let's move on to. The all next. right, now. How, how much longer we got? Is it about two something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay focused. All right. Um, next one was. Uh, 
this this one uh, Oh, wait, this is what you're talking about right here. Importance of communication. Okay, I am Katina Morrison on Instagram. She says, what is the importance of communication, your first or favorite date, and how to make up and not break up? That's Sorry. a whole lot. Well, our first, what was, the, what was our first date? Well, let's not, let's start oh, let's with start the with communication. Let's start okay. with, everybody, Importance of communication. She must be fairly new to us, to us because we went down this a lot. All right, so communication. This is how I'm going to tell you. Man, just talk to each other. <laughs> be honest. Don't be afraid. Mean what you say, say what you mean. With love. That don't mean go in and say how you say things, why you say things. When you say things need to be taken into consideration if you truly love somebody and you want to work through it. Um, <clears throat> and how you hear things. Because communication is not just about things that are said, it's about things that are being heard mm -hmm. and how people feel as a result of those two things. Um, what was and, make, it? and making sure you're honest about what you feel like is being said. Because I think that's the thing about communication, to, to Chance's point, is that, like I might say, uh, Oh, oh, but you ain't get no haircut today. Mm -hmm. And he might hear uh, my, some, something wrong with my head. Like, all I did was ask a question, but you might hear it like take like it's a offensive thing. Like you saying my head look a mess, mm -hmm. right? If she um, say that right before we getting ready to go into a production, right? Yeah. That it, it, right. it holds a different kind of so weight. So it's kind of like, wait, what's, like, what's, 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 my head what are look, you saying? I'm looking a mess. So like, right. you know, that kind of thing. So and, be clear on communication. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to ask questions about, can, can you kind of tell me what you mean? And also it's okay to be honest and say, I know you just said this, but this is what I heard. So, exactly. which is not always fair to your partner. So you got to be like, let me be honest with you. This is what I heard. And I feel a certain type of way. So it really explain to me what you're trying to say. But it takes growth to get to a place where you can communicate that openly. But if you're early in a relationship and you can start it off that way, baby, the better you'll be. Yep. It took us a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is a, a very important piece in a relationship is communication. So uh, the other part of her question was your first or your favorite date? I don't remember our first date. I mean, I don't know which one we would classify as our first date. Um, what would you classify as our first date? Our, our first date. This is going to seem odd but this is mine. This is how I view it. So when me and Tab reconnected um, when I was in college, we, um, Tab drove me back to college one day, right? She was driving me back to college. I looked at that because this is where we were still trying to figure out what we was gonna do, if we was gonna get back together, what our future looked like together, I always looked at that as somewhat of a date because she, the way it was set up was he chose to step in and take me back to school where I had already had a, you know, a, a ride back to college and it was about a two hour drive. And it was a moment where we were <clears throat> alone and to me it was a date because of it was a two hour drive, we're alone um, and it was intimate. Um, and it was like still new um, and it's one of the it's one of the moments that I cherish the most and I think too now that I'm think now that I'm saying it out loud it's probably why I'm so particular about our car rides because that's one of my favorite memories um, us driving on the back roads you know out through Burlington to get to to the 40 and go on that you know and then me you know us re we are recapping what our life has been like without one another. And it's just like a date, you know what yeah. I mean? With the exception of, of food and uh, what other people would probably uh, view as entertainment um, is one of my favorite moments that I view. I kind of look at it as a day, even over COVID. I always look forward to those rides and I can get, become very sensitive when we're in the car together and she's not engaging with me. I, you know what I mean? Like yeah, if she's not, if we're in a car and Tab is at, on my passenger side, 
and she's taking it most most recent days if she's taking a lot of calls and we're not engaging i can kind of get in my feelings if i don't know that that's what she's gonna do if i'm driving her and i'm like she's telling me i need to take these calls baby can you drive me i can do it but now that I'm saying it out loud, I think that's probably where that stems that's from, a, is where it's like, that's a sensitive for me, because even with the kids, yeah. if me and her talking, and throughout the years, and somebody like, if we having one of our moments, and somebody interfere, I'm, I'm like, man, shut up. <laughs> like, because this it's- our space. Because, yeah, because it's, it, it, to me, was a date, and it's significant into our existence and it just we did special. a lot in the car yeah we did yeah, in we our spent, first couple of years yeah because like, we had no money we had no we, money we, we have no we have our own space space we used to rent a room uh for our first like time that we lived together yeah. so we spent a lot of time in the car like riding and talking yeah um sitting that would be where we you know did our the most of our talking mm -hmm. and so it's still a space for us like you said during COVID it's like let's go get in the car and just ride you know yeah over so. COVID when we didn't when it was when all of the things that we had gained were taken away from us yeah it was kind of like it pushed us back to the beginning where like listen we just need to be in, in each other's company yeah um I just need you to be my passenger where are we going I don't know we yeah. just gonna ride. As long as you are here, we can. We don't need a whole lot. We hit the store, grab a couple of snacks, and just drive. <laughs> and you know what yeah. I mean. So yeah. that would be my answer to that. That's a, you know, it's a difficult question, that but that would yeah. be. I mean, yeah, we had so many. We were so young. When we got together. Uh, I mean, we could even go back to eighth grade, like our first little date. We went to go party. see a uh, uh, bodyguard. Oh, yeah. Remember? Remember we went to go see bodyguard. Yeah, we went first. to Houston. First time going and, uh, to the And what's movies. that? Is that Kevin Costner? Yeah. Yeah, we went to yeah. go see The Bodyguard. I've always that, loved you. Yeah. You know, I hit you with that song after. Yeah, you did. <clears throat> Don't. We okay. This was, what's the next part of the question? I ain't going to, because my voice is a little strained. And on, how to make up and... I'm on vocal rest right now, so I can't, <clears throat> I can't give y'all that Whitney Houston right now. How, they, how to make up and not break up. <laughs> I think we just covered that, covered that, though, with communication. Communicating, yeah. Yeah, so I think... And also... Realize that every argument doesn't have, the argument doesn't mean you're breaking up. The disagreement doesn't mean you're breaking up. I had to learn that very early on in our relationship. Every time we got an argument, my go-to thing was, well, let's just not be together then. And he was like, why is that always your go-to? Well, I, I don't know, young and dumb, right? Because if you ain't gonna no agree experience. with me, if you ain't gonna agree with me, then you can't be with me. <laughs> that is not what it was. <laughs> I just, you know what, I think that not realizing that my parents were together for a very long time, but they divorced after almost 25 years together. And I think that I didn't realize how that affected me. So I had, and it was still kind of fresh for me when we got together. So every time we argued in my mind, I thought this means we're about to break up, right? Um, and chances to be like, why is that your go-to? Like, we having an argument, like a like, or disagreement. That don't mean we breaking up. And I used to be like, oh, you know. So, just because you are upset or you have a disagreement, it doesn't always go to break up. Um, and you know, sometimes after them disagreements, the makeup be the best makeup. So, mm. you want to have an argument right now so we can nah, make up later? Nah, okay. Uh, this. Uh, all right, who we got uh, next? So. <laughs> That's okay, two, let's right? See. We did two. Uh, okay, yeah, that was two. And so, um, <laughs> I know you don't want to do this one. Uh, well, we can. Okay. We can. It's just, we don't have, they don't, what, what we don't want people to think is that we're going to always agree. Well, yeah, no, we don't. So. Um, what is it? 82 thig? 82 82 thig. Mm -hmm. T H I G. She says, hello. Should counseling slash therapy be included in the relationship as partners and on an individual basis? I say there's a time in everyone's life, right, that they may need therapy or counseling individually or in relationship, right? I've had my own uh, therapy individually that helped me um, work out some stuff that I was dealing with, right? Uh, when we first, before we got married, we were supposed to do like a whole 
counseling session, but we ended up doing like a, the workbook uh, version of that. I don't even know if they still do that, but um, yeah, what'd you think, bud? Let me let me read it again. She said, "Be basically should counsel on, and therapy I'm, be included in relationships as partners and on an individual basis. So together be or included is where I had to re. Is it? Do you think that she's saying? Like mandatory? Required. Yeah. But I don't uh, think it has to be a mandatory thing. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say to each his own. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm, I believe in therapy, but I don't believe that everybody needs therapy. <clears throat> and I don't think that it should be pushed on everyone. Um, I'm not a believer that every situation requires therapy, nor am I a believer that because I didn't want to do it, that you shouldn't do it. I think it is very, uh, it, it's just based on the individual and the relationship. And you got to do some hard uh, um, soul searching to see if, if that's something that you, you need. And you also need to do some, some hard soul searching if you are trying to press somebody to go to therapy um, and why it bothers you that they don't. Um, uh, that's just my my take on it. I don't and to and to and if it and if you are asking if it should be required, um, my answer is no. It should not be a requirement of marriage or a relationship. That's what I would say. I would say um, because I, I I just don't believe that everybody should be required to go talk to somebody about their relationship. Yeah, it's also not a blueprint, right? Yeah. It, there's. Um, marriage isn't a one-way street. <clears throat> Everybody's relationship is going to be different. I also think that, to, to what you were just saying about uh, why is it something that is bothering you so much that they won't go, I think that's when you know you have to go alone, right? Like, you you got something you got to work out, so make sure you all right. Mm -hmm. And then as you working on your stuff, it'll become more and more clear to you what you may need from your partner. And also maybe you can express that to them um, without judgment and without force. Uh, and then things can start to work out differently. So that's my take. Yeah. yeah. And look, it's one thing for you to say, <clears throat> I think you should go to therapy. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to you saying, I would like to go to therapy because there's, there's something about you that I can't understand why I don't like it, why I don't understand it, why. That's something different. If you go to your partner and you say, hey, I think we should go to therapy, and they say, why? And you say, because this is, I think you need help with this. I don't like <laughs> Now to you me, just turned it off. I think you're setting yourself up for failure. But if you say, I think we should go because it's this thing that I can't understand. My, it's so, so now you're making it about you. So now what I envision is that we're going to go and you're going you're gonna to sit. I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be fully connected and say, okay, well, they, you don't understand this about me. You got to do it like an invention. Talk. <laughs> you, <laughs> now you get what I mean. Yeah, tell, it's just like tell them you're going for something else. Yeah. I just want you to go with me. Yeah, if you're going, if for you me. if you want to go and you want my support and you're trying to figure <laughs> out what's wrong with you, I'm all in. I'm for it. Let's go. Yeah. Sit in, baby. We're gonna figure. We're gonna figure out what's wrong with you. Yeah. That's it. That's how I look at it. All right. <laughs> Next person. Okay. Next. Uh, blending families. <clears throat> Or in the, it was two of those. One was said blending families, navigating as a bonus parent. I mean, I guess this was just really for me as a bonus parent, I guess. Um, but I mean, we have blended families. Yeah. Uh, well, blended families can be. Very. Different. I guess what they what they talking about is uh, stepmom, yeah, stepdad, not as marriage, and now your family's being connected. Right. Yeah. Blended families is when like you already. So uh, a lot, and let's let's do this real quick because so many people, some people haven't been with us on our journey for the whole time. So sometimes y'all see pictures of us, the whole family, and they'll be like, "Wait a minute, who? I thought they only had two kids." <laughs> or oh, Chance must have been uh, cheating because he got another daughter because they be thinking Leah is younger than Choice. Yeah. So Talia is the oldest, right? She's about to be twenty-eight. Jesus, ooh, somebody getting old. Mm -hmm. Um, and Choice is about to be twenty-two. 
So, but Leah is Chance's daughter he had in high school, right? And so, if you know, we told the story many times. Um, like, I, I became her bonus mom, right? I don't really like stepmom, but uh, so I was a, a, a bonus mom before I was a mom. And so, I've been in her life since she was two years old. And so, uh, dang, it has been a long time. So, uh, but anywho, I've always looked at her as my bonus baby, right? Like I always respected, you know, her mama and never tried to be her mom. It was always kind of fun for me because I was like, oh, I get, I get to actually be the friend, right? With like mom responsibility when she with us, but there's a different comfort level that I get to establish, right? Because uh, I'm not mama, you know, sometimes you, you have that person that you feel like, oh, I can tell them a little bit more. I can, you know, probably get over a little bit more, different things like that. But to me, it was always more fun in that position uh, with Leah. Now, was the journey always fun? It was very difficult <laughs> because we were very young in this. Um, so it was, there were, there we were, were. We were young and let's face it, and this yeah. is for, and any teenage parents, um, for a lot, the average teenage relationship or teenage parents, it it's difficult. It's going to be difficult. What you mm -hmm. you you understand? So, and because you're growing up with your child, you're immature. It's going to come with a lot of uh, um, hardships, and then you know, uh, miss or unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. So it was difficult, you know, um, from that aspect. Um, Leah did not get to have a lot of the things that her, her uh, younger you know, sister or brother did as a result of when she came or, or how she came. So that, in a blended sense, is, you know, is that, that can be a little bit more difficult. Um, and we didn't get to raise her, yeah. right? So those weekends or summers were very limited. And then, of course, when we moved to a whole nother state, that was hard as well. You know, she came and lived with us like her first year of high school. Um, and, you know, been back and forth since graduating from uh, college, right? And, and moving out here. But it's still very different than the experience of her, you know, her brother and sister who get us every single day together, right? So it's a, it's a whole different experience. but. Together, they know, like, oh, this is our family, mm -hmm. right? Um, but blending, and I guess, like, to, to the point of, like, the families itself, like, it's really always just been about Talia, you know, for me. Um, and, and making sure that she feels loved and not feel different and included. Like, that's just always, for me, like, what I, like, I guess my... My purpose, I felt like it, I, I got to be purposeful in this and intentional with that. Um, I was a, a stepchild later in life, and it was it was difficult for me because my parents were together for a very long time. So it was it was a lot different where Leah never had her parents together. I had my parents together, so going into a, a new, you know, having a stepmama, for me, I was kind of like, I don't like this, you know, in the beginning, you know, I want my mom and daddy to still be together. And I think that most kids, once your parents are together, you still always desire, if it was a healthy relationship and all I saw was healthiness with my parents, they hid their arguments. So I never really understood it. I was like, well, why they ain't still together? So I, I longed for that for so long. But even though Leah never had that experience, I think a child still wishes they had their parents together. Um, and so I always kind of kept that in the back of my head to try to make her feel as comfortable uh, as possible, knowing like, well, girl, you get the bonus mama. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was not always easy, but it has been a blessing to me to just have that relationship with her. Um, and now, of course, as she's a, she's a woman now, it's even, it's even better as she grows and she learns so much more about life and understands uh, even, you know, her dad more, because for a long time, I felt like I would kind of be in the middle of her and her daddy and trying to, you know, do extra work, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to be like, you know what, I, 
and let me back up and let y'all do your thing. But now that she's, she's a little woman, okay, we be having conversations that are so much more deeper and mature. Uh, and there's a, a better understanding there, I think. Yeah, lessons so. of, a, you know, when you look at it in hindsight, of course, if, you know, you know, you like to say, I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, it's difficult for, it's difficult on, on, on all parties, on her mom, on her, on me, when you have a baby so young um, and, you're, and you're trying to mature yourself. So, um, but I'm thankful, you know, for how it did turn out. You know what I mean? Looking at it, it could have been so much worse. Um, but to answer the question, it, it's a difficult process, uh, but difficult can also be rewarding, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, when you look at it. If you look, if you choose to look <laughs> at it as half full or half empty. But I will say, and I've said this in the past, the children are not the ones who make it difficult. No. It's always the parents. Always. Mm -hmm. The parents make it difficult. Always. So if you are in a blended family, put aside your, your, your ego, your feelings against each other, and think about your children, right? Because the children are the ones who are affected in the long run. And they suffer. And they not, not, suffer. They suffer. So make sure that there's, you, you put them first. There's things that I, I'm telling you that if I, I, and that's why I was saying I'm talking to the teenage parent right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, please take into consideration what Tab is saying and what I'm saying in regards to that. And because you will look back on it and be like, man, I wished it, I would have handled that differently for the sake of my child, because you will be then repairing damage. Leah's about to turn 30. I mean, she's knocking on 30. Yeah. She's probably gonna be Ooh. mad that I said Ooh, that. Leah. But, but <laughs> there's things that I know that she, you know, I wish that I could have prevented her having to go through, see. Um, but yeah, that's something that please hear us on. But, yeah, absolutely. All right, what okay. we got? Uh, we are running out of time, so I, I, I'm trying to find <clears throat> one that may not be as long. Um, Defining moments. That's a good one. Okay. So this is from Fitz2458. What was the defining moment in your relationship or marriage where you both knew you would ride or die for each other? Mm. Man, it's, I, it's so many. There is yeah. so many. Um, I think... Hmm. Coming back from California after moving there when we were 19 hmm. and watching you encounter and uh, go against what you were, how you were raised, mm -hmm. um, not to shack, you being a daddy's girl and loving your dad the way that you did, that was probably the most impactful moment where I seen that, that, you know, this girl, I knew you to be a father's, you know, a daddy's girl. I knew how much you love him. I knew what he meant to you. I knew that you was raised in the church. I knew what you were going to, the pressures you were going to be put upon, you know, put upon you from all aspects, your granny, your mom. But to watch you say, nah, I'm going to hit this head on and I'm willing to be in it with you. Uh, I think that was probably the defining moment right mm -hmm. there where it was like, hey, yeah, she with me. <laughs> yeah, she, she riding with me. We going. Um, yeah, that was it for me. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I've always felt that way about you. Like, I'm going to ride for you. Um, it, it's so many things. I mean, the living in California and you kind of just showing me that I didn't need my daddy, you know, for everything mm -hmm. and teaching me how to be independent, but also to lean on you, you know, in our relationship. I think that was when I really was like, oh, wait, like he my person, like, like, you know, we're going to do life together. Yeah, even though we were young, 19 years old. Um, and then it's been, I mean, it's been so many times where <laughs> chance he make me feel safe, right? 
And I'd be like, man, I, I listen. That I know he will take somebody out for me, <laughs> right? But I definitely think that that was probably the beginning moment. Um, but also kind of going back to me taking you to school. You know, yeah. I just knew I always wanted to make sure you were well. You know, even when we weren't together, I remember, you know, in high school, um, when I found out that you was having a baby. Well, that's you. I'm right. talking about, but what is something that... No, I'm just saying, like, me? I, I feel like I just always had this thing where I want to make sure, like, he know I'm going to ride with him. Like... But what made you feel like I would ride with you? What was the defining moment, I something it, I did? When you taught me how to stop leaning on, on daddy for everything, hmm. right? Um, that, was, that was a real big thing for me. You know, when I picked up the phone, I was like, I'm going to call my daddy. And you took the phone out my hand, like, no, you're not going to call your daddy back. You can't do that. Like, that's like, we can do this together. Like, those life moments of teaching me things that my daddy had only taught me as a man, hmm. you know? Uh, I thought, well, I kind of got tickled earlier because on a lighter note, right? Later in our relationship, because sometimes you need to be reminded. We, as we started this off, there's ups and downs, highs, lows in relationships. What? <laughs> so in, uh, it was when, I don't know if Quest was born. So I had my first case of this going, yeah, listen, this going, yeah, I'm about to take a whole turn, right? <laughs> So I go to the I, I go to the restroom, and I use the restroom. <laughs> we was I already in. We was already riding and dying though. Yeah, but this right here, though, look, man, listen, this is on the lighter note that yeah. I know I know somebody gonna be able to relate to. Yeah. And they gonna find to be a little funny, but they gonna yeah. see what I mean. Yeah. Right. I get up and there's blood, right, in my stool, right? So I'm like, I'm panicking, right? I've, I've been healthy my entire life. <laughs> JR, what you laughing at, man? So <laughs> JR know the story already. So I get up, right, and I'm like, oh, my God, man. Immediately, man, I think, oh, I'm dying. All right, that, oh, my God, that's, man, I'm, uh, something's wrong, right? My wife is the closest person to me, right? So I go tell my wife, I'm like, babe. I gotta make a doctor's appointment. So it's wrong. I'm bleeding, right? When I poop, I'm bleeding. <laughs> and she was like, "No, oh, babe, what do you mean? You're so, you know, she, you know, like she usually do." And she's like, "It's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. You know, you, you probably were strained got, in. You probably, yeah. you know, you probably straining too much or whatever." And I'm like, "Nah, I ain't. I wasn't straining. It just came out, right?" So. I called my doctor immediately. Get a doctor's appointment, right? Hey, go to the doctor. And I'm at work trying to get off. I was like, I'm gonna meet said, you there. Hey, yeah. But I'm like, nah, you gotta go with me. Because in my head, I'm thinking the worst. I'm thinking the absolute worst, right? Like, man, this is terrible. And, the, and get in the doctor's office, and the doctor is saying, all right, come on, let's go on. And I'm like, nah, we gotta wait for my wife. I'm waiting on my wife, right? Because I'm thinking, if it's gonna be some bad news, you know what I mean? I want, I want my wife to be there. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't going in there. I'm waiting on my wife, right? He so, also didn't want nobody going in his butt without did, me there. Yeah. Then, <laughs> so then Tav shows up, and I'm like, all right. And she said, you know, Tav's like, you want me to be in there? I was like, yeah, I want you to be in there, right? Like, not thinking about it, right? And Tabby told me, she was like, Chance, it's probably a hemorrhoid. And I'm like, man, I'm too young to have a hemorrhoid. I ain't no hemorrhoids. Nah, man, this is the end. I already know. It. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> we go in, and the doctor is kind of like, you sure you want your wife in here? And I'm like, yeah, I want my wife in here, right? You know, so she was like, OK, all right. Mr. Brown, drop your bottoms. You know, the whole, you know how it go, the whole spill. 
Lay on, lay on his bed. Get up here, lay on your side, turn to the side. Pull and I'm like, up. and pull your knees up. <laughs> so I'm laying up there on the table with my big deal, like Fetal this. position. Right? <clears throat> this lady come, do the, do the exam, stick her head back there and say, oh, Mr. Brown, you got a hemorrhoid. You can get on up, get out of it. Now, the ride or die moment was when I could look at my wife and tell she didn't feel no kind of ways different about seeing her husband up here in a fetal position. She didn't see, I didn't see no, uh, it was nothing to make me feel embarrassed. It was to reassure me. It was nothing to say, man, you was terrified coming in. It was nothing. It was nothing where she looked at me as I was less of a man we actually was able to laugh at it and really laugh at it together. Like, not like one of those where I've heard other men not be able to have that or feel like they gotta be some superman to where they can't share with their wife yeah. a fear, right? So that fear stemmed from, I've had relatives that have passed away from cancer. Um, and those were like the first signs, right? So I, it, it, it stemmed from a real place. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember that and I remember how much we laughed. We laughed about getting old. We laughed about my reaction. We laughed together. Put this medicine and, on. And, and she helped me with the applying of the medicine. Yeah. Um, in, those, in, those, in those kind of moments when you're talking about marriage and defining moments, I think it's important to share it, right? And I don't, I don't really care what people are gonna say about it. I think, it, I think it's true. And you gotta be able to see the value in that in marriage. Um, and if you too, if you too sexy, if you too manly, if you too macho, too cool for if school, you too huh? cool, or if you have an expectation of your spouse that your spouse can't be vulnerable or show signs of weakness, and you're looking for it to be successful. I don't know if that's. I don't know if you're looking in the right place when you're talking about marriage. Um, no, that is a. I mean, we were already ride or die. Then. We was ride or die, but uh, it was a reminding moment. You it know? was. That was. It, it, think about choice when choice like, is born. Yeah. When to, uh, when. Yeah. Well, my, listen. <laughs> when when I. <laughs> first of all, I was big when I was pregnant with choice, right? The, my, you know, my nose spread, I was big, but I dropped that weight so fast. Like, after I had chores, because I was also so sick when I was pregnant with her in the beginning, I couldn't keep nothing down, so I was losing weight. But then I did get big. Uh, and then, you know, within them six weeks, man, I dropped way more than what I was before. You know, I was thinner than before I had chores. But when I had Quest Brown, when I was pregnant with Quest, <laughs> You talking about something completely different. I thought you was Baby, talking about. <laughs> you always say that. I looked in the mirror and could not find myself. I was like, golly. I'm like, Tan, I, I know that you in there somewhere. I kept saying, Tan, babe, if you leave me, I understand because I don't even know who I am. <laughs> I look like Respucia. I could, everything in me had changed. Like my, I had, I was getting moles in the corners of my eyes. My, my neck was 10 shades darker. I, my nose was ear to ear. It looked like somebody had set a whole bell pepper on my face. I was, you can even see my teeth. That's how my, my mouth was swollen. Like I, I stopped wearing myself. I was like, I don't want to, what was it? Like 220, 216. I told the doctor, hey, listen, I don't even want to know. You keep the records, don't even tell me. I was so big and every day my, my husband would be like, you beautiful, babe. I'd be like, babe, I know you just telling me that because you love me. <laughs> then I kept saying, man, you really love me because, boy, <laughs> I was, you know, I was so grateful to be pregnant and, and I, I love being pregnant. When I tell you, I kept saying, man, this is going to be a beautiful baby when he come out because he I has thought, taken all of my beauty, okay? I thought you was going to talk about 
when you thought Chosen was coming out the wrong hole. But we did talk about that before. <laughs> did you not, listen, and I looked. I thought when I was in labor your with Chosen, I did. When I was in labor with Chosen, I thought Chosen was coming out my butt. I said, hey, t- hey, listen, you got to get the people in here because she coming out the wrong hole. <laughs> I know what we went to. The, we did all the classes together and stuff. They didn't plan us. She coming out the wrong hole, man. I could feel her coming out my butt. I was like, babe, look in my butt and see if she's coming out. And my mama had, t- my mama was laughing so hard. Chance spread my butt cheeks and look. He's like, nah, babe, it ain't, it ain't nothing right there. It ain't nothing coming out. But I needed that. I JR, needed him to tell me because I felt like she was coming no out. With no hesitation. Because listen, he might have thought the same because we don't want to call it right I, now. Listen, if she tell me that's what she thought, that's what she thought. And if she, if she telling me to get the doctors, they better take her serious. Listen, listen she said it's coming out of uh, her butt. But we... I don't know how, but... It's coming. <laughs> I had back labor, so I didn't know about all that, that pressure that was going to be back there and down there. Um, <laughs> Those are the defining moments. But it have been some very defining moments that we have had. Uh, in these 25 years, but I've always known very early on that my husband was my ride or die, um, and and vice versa. Yep. You know, there's there's absolutely nothing uh, that I wouldn't do for my husband, and I know that there's absolutely nothing he wouldn't do for me um, and our family. Right? We are in it. To win it, okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. But that one ran over a little longer, but <clears throat> I think it was worth it. Mm-hmm. These were fun. We are grateful that y'all sent these questions in. There's so many more, but maybe on another day we'll do them again. So, until the next time, honey, y'all go on about y'all business and have the most amazing day. But even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's him. Love y'all. God bless y'all. See you next time. Peace. (laughs) Thank y'all for watching. And don't forget to click here for more episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Very good.